All right, guys, welcome back. So, in the first part of this video, I think what we'll do is we'll take a look at the tree saddle itself, how it's designed, how it's made. Now, keep in mind, there are various different types of tree saddles out there. The one in particular that I'm going to be using is the Aero Hunter Flex. And I myself really love this saddle. I really do. This is a, it's a great saddle. It's very comfortable for me. I went up one size in the saddle. You have a size one and a size two. I opted for a size two. Now I'm only a 34 to 36 inch waist. But I found that using a number one size created a lot of hip pinch for me. Um, these are some of the terms that you'll get used to very quickly when you're talking about the saddle itself. Um, so yeah, so I had a lot of hip pinch. It really didn't matter how I set up the saddle to make it more comfortable for me. I still had that hip pinch. <clears throat> so I opted for a size number two, which is, you know, made for a bigger waist. But what it did was it alleviated how tight the saddle went around my hips. So let's go ahead and let's take a look at the saddle itself. Let me reposition the camera a little bit and we'll take a look at the saddle and the components of the saddle, okay? So I'll be right back with you. All right, guys, I'm back. Sorry for the way the camera is set up. I am filming this by myself, so it does make it a little bit difficult, but I wanted to make sure you had an idea of what the saddle looks like. All right, now this is, of course, the back side of the saddle. First thing you're going to notice is the shape of the saddle how it's kind of like a football shape. If you look at it that way, you know, it is kind of more like a football, you know, it's, or egg shaped, however you wanted to look at it. Now this is fully open and this is the um, Aero Hunter Flex. This is a pleated saddle. And what that means is there are some items that, you know, you can, it can be closed up a little bit to make it a little more streamlined, so to speak. But over time, as you use these pleated saddles, one of the design flaws that I found is the pleat doesn't close very well. Once it's been weighted, you know, after X amount of uses. So the first thing you're going to notice is you have these series of loops right here. And these series of loops, this is called um, molly webbing. And what they are used for is to attach um, some of your gear, like say, for example, your saddlebags, your dump pouch, your roll pouch, whatever you wanna use to carry the items that you're gonna need when you're in the saddle. Um, what I do is I tend to wear my saddle in to the area that I'm gonna hunt, just makes it a lot easier. So, getting back to the saddle, this is, like I said, it is a pleated saddle. It is made to where you can expand it to open it up, which what that does is it gives you a little bit more, gives you a couple more inches of real estate. So for me, it kind of basically acts like a big hammock chair. That's the best way I can think of to refer to it, okay? Now, along the top row, you have your main support that the molly webbing is sewed into. There is a continuous loop that goes all the way around. That is the main frame of the saddle itself. And this is a very thick two inch webbing that's used. And it's, a, it's just a continuous loop. And it makes two loops on each end. These big loops are used for the bridge of the saddle, which we'll get in what the bridge of the saddle is here in just a few minutes. But one thing you're also gonna notice, there are two additional loops on each end of the saddle. On both the left and the right hand side, these are for your lineman's belt. The lineman's belt is gonna be something we're gonna be discussing later on in the video because that's gonna be used in how you climb the tree safely. Okay, so, We've got the lineman's belt. We've got your bridge loops. And then on the underside, 
you also have two leg buckle straps. Now, if we turn it over and look at it on the inside, you can see more detailed of the how the pleat is done and things of that nature, how it should kind of fold up. But like I said, I just leave it fully extended. Doesn't bother me in any way, shape or form. It's actually really comfortable. But what I want you to pay attention to is on the top side, you have another section of strap that is sewn together. And this is your waist strap. It's got an ADF buckle, which is climbing rated. Keep in mind, all this gear is going to be climbing rated and you need to use climbing rated gear when you're doing this because you need to remain safe at all times. Climbing, no matter which way you do it, is inherently dangerous. So, very simple buckle. I think it's based off of the Cobra style buckle. Don't quote me on that because I'm not 100% sure, but it just snaps in. Now, if you're wondering about the snaps themselves, basically what you do is you have these two button tabs and these two tabs right here. And all you have to do is push those out and the buckle releases. If you don't wear your saddle in to when you, where you're hunting and you decide that you want to put it on once you get to the tree that you plan on hunting, all you got to simply do if you're worried about noise is push your release tabs fully forward and slide your buckle in and it makes virtually zero to very little noise. Now, if you pay attention also on the inside of your bridge loops, this right here is the bridge. This is what you are gonna be attached to once you're attached to the tree. And we'll get more into that when we actually start getting into the ropes themselves. But what I wanted to show you was the leg loops also have a buckle, which are the same type buckle as the main belt buckle. And it does the same thing. It's got a leg strap that just comes around your legs and fastens into the buckle. And again, if you're worried about it making noise, same principle take the ears and you can these two move independently so you need to release both of these at the same time but all you got to really do is simply hold it in the release position squeeze up on it and hold it in the uh, release position and then you can slide your buckle in real gently and it doesn't make no noise i'll demonstrate that again this is all the noise it's going to make when you when you actually connect it it's a slight click, but if you want to minimize that, go ahead and hold your ears open and then slide it in gentle. And again, virtually no noise. Same for the other side. Push your tabs up. And then release. And it's tight. Now, that in itself is basically all the saddle is. Here in just a minute, I'll show you how to put the saddle on and how it actually wears. Now, let's take a look at, like I said, you have your bridge loops, you have your lineman's belt loops, and then you have your bridge. Now this bridge is fully adjustable. You can adjust how the bridge, how tight the bridge actually is. This plays a part in when you're climbing and in your, when you're in the tree as far as how much pressure it puts, where it puts the pressure on your body. It will change how the saddle feels when you're actually setting in it at hunting height. Now this has, as you can see, there's no type of adjustment device on here. All this is, is just a separate rope of smaller diameter tied around the, the main bridge itself and then connected and fixed to the opposite end of the saddle from one end to the other, just tied on with a knot. What makes this very unique and able to be adjusted is 
this right here, which is a friction hitch. And I will later in the video go in to describe what friction hitches are, and we'll even discuss some of the most popular knots in friction hitches. So, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up the camera to where you can see how I put the saddle on, and how it actually fits, and how it wears, and you can have a look and see what your final product would be as you're at the hunting you know as you're getting ready to hunt or you're actually at the tree you plan on hunting all right so give me just a few minutes and i'll be right back with you so stay tuned i'm going to reposition the camera so you can see what's going on all right everybody so now i'm back i'm back with the saddle itself and what we're going to do is we're going to show you how to put the saddle on very simple there's one or two ways you can do this. You can either have the bridge itself fixed to this, or you can attach it using a simple carabiner. That way you don't have to step through the loop of the bridge. But to me, it doesn't matter either way if I step through the bridge or what or whatever. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna let, place it flat on the ground, and I'm actually just gonna slide my feet through the bridge. Pull that up over one foot to get it started. And then I'll slide my feet through the bridge. Back up so you can see a little bit. I'll, you know, I got the bridge right here around my feet. I'll just slide that up. Then I'll take that and I'll make sure my, your waist belt's adjusted tight. You want it, when you put it on, you really don't want it right around where you have a belt if you're already wearing a belt or where a belt would go. You actually want it a little higher above your waist. So I tend to try to put this right above the line of my pants. I'll just fasten that buckle. I'll adjust it to make sure it's tight. So I'm good there. Then I'll reach down between my legs and I'll grab each one of my leg straps. And I will take that strap I will get the buckle, I'll fasten the right side, I'll reach through, grab that buckle here, and that is pretty much essentially putting the saddle on. Now, like I said, I wear this in, let me see if I can come closer. Alright, so that's the bridge, that's the saddle, this is what creates the seat that you actually set in. And like I said, I don't know how well you can see, but this is, a, uh, again, this is a pleated saddle. So if you look at it, the pleats are open. That is really how I prefer the saddle to be set up. But when I'm walking into the tree, what I'll do is I'll pull this tight and I'll just simply wrap the um, tag end around the saddle and just kind of tuck it into the belt itself. Now I don't have to worry about nothing on the saddle, catching anything as I'm walking in, any limbs, anything like that. Everything's pretty tight to my body, so it works very well. Now, like I was showing you on the saddle itself, it's totally adjustable. And the way it adjusts is with this friction hitch. Now this one here that I'm using on here is a swabish hitch. It releases pretty easily under load but as you can see the rope slides through it very easily it moves freely up and down the rope even when it's loaded I can still move it pretty easy one of the things you're going to notice is I've got another piece of rope attached here I just use this as a lock because I don't use any type of a hitch tender or a mechanical ascender to adjust the length of this bridge when I'm in the tree or when I'm climbing what I do is I simply just run it run the tag end which is the end of the rope through the lineman's belt loop on my right side and then just feed it back through the open end of this loop and what that does is that just keeps it from coming out of that loop as you see it you know it's stuck in that loop pretty good but the benefit of that, <clears throat> excuse me, the benefit of that is 
when this is attached to my lead rope that I'm climbing with, I can take the tag end and with the pressure that the lineman's belt loop puts on the back side of this friction hitch, I can just pull the rope and it makes it easy for a one-handed adjustment. So again, if I was walking in, that's pretty much how I would wear it. Like I said, it's a very simple product. Um, and all it is, in short, is a, a different way for you to hunt from an elevated position. What this does is this allows you to not have to carry any type of a, you know, your hang on stand or your climber stand is. This serves as pretty much the main principle to hold you to the tree. It's basically a positioning harness, so it's not a safety harness. This right here is not what's gonna keep me safe. What's gonna keep me safe are the ropes that we're gonna talk about in the next video, okay? So, just another look at the saddle and what it actually is because some people are really confused as to how the saddle fits on your body. And when you start to put all this together, you're gonna to notice that it comes together pretty quickly and it makes a very good modular system for climbing up a tree as well. And it's the benefits to hunting out of this are they're great. There's some there's pros, but there's also some cons. And just like any hunting situation, you're gonna have to weigh the pros and cons of what's best for you. But if you're watching this video, then I have to assume that you know you're looking into getting into saddle hunting and you're wanting to find out what you really need to get started. In the next video, what we're gonna do is we're gonna discuss the types of ropes that you need and how to set those ropes up. So stay tuned for the next video, and I do appreciate your time. Thanks for watching this video. Thanks for stopping by South Carolina Native Outdoors YouTube channel, and you know, I hope you enjoy everything. I hope that everything that I'm doing is very informative because that's what this, this video is, uh, these videos are about, is being, as a community, trying to help other hunters out with new technology that comes out or old technology that's being brought back in you know to give you another means to different ways to hunt different things in your arsenal to use um one thing that i did forget to mention uh, i can't even talk today is to be minimal on what you are having to carry in saddle hunting it's all about being a lightweight easy to travel fast um, if you're like me and you hunt in places that are far away from other hunters then you're gonna you're gonna want to be able to be light be mobile and a quick down and dirty hunt setup this gets the job done great just on a four note I have now decided that after hunting out of this last season that this is gonna be my primary means of hunting I don't have to worry about carrying in a climber stand, a hang on stand. I hunt public land, so it's perfect. It doesn't damage the trees with the way that I do it. So, you know, just stay tuned and, you know, thanks for watching and we'll see you with the next video. Now, go ahead and look for video number two in the video series of Saddle Hunting for the Newbie, and we're going to discuss ropes and hitches. All right. All right, guys, you have a great weekend. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.